This is All India Radio, Tiruvannadapuram. In the English program today, you can listen to a talk on The Sixth Extinction and Why We Should Be Concerned About It by P. Vijay Kumar, Retired Professor, Government College for Women, Tiruvannadapuram. The Sixth Extinction Social scientists, people who study all kinds of social phenomena using data and logic, come up with interesting insights now and then. For instance, we are told that ordinary conversations and news cycles tend to be dominated by bad news. A million good things may happen, but a rare accident or a crime gets all the attention. If a billion people go to bed after ordinary, reasonably happy days, that will not make the news. Indian Rail, one of the most extensive and efficient transport systems in the world, drops over 22 million passengers safely at their destinations every day. Every single day, across the globe, over 40,000 commercial flights take off and land. There are no headlines about these things. When an accident occurs, it dominates the news. Most news is about political or cultural issues. These are rarely existential matters, that is, matters of life and death. But there are actually two existential questions facing mankind. One is climate change and the other is a sixth extinction. These are existential because they threaten the very existence of mankind. They are not receiving the attention they should. Climate change does attract little attention here in Kerala. The rains and floods get noticed. Extreme weather events are now present everywhere on earth. Fires, floods and droughts are throwing life out of gear. No part of the world is exempt. What is causing all this? The short answer is the greenhouse effect. Man-made emissions have, particularly in the last 250 years, upset the natural balance of gases in our atmosphere. As a result, the atmosphere traps more heat that we get from the sun now than before. This heating churns the atmosphere, makes the oceans more volatile and transforms the land. Extreme weather becomes the norm. There is another existential threat facing us, the sixth extinction. What is it and why is it so important? Scientists believe that there are about 8 million species on Earth. Species go extinct now and then. When this is a global event and when more than 75% of all known species die in a short time, it is called a mass extinction. In the history of life on Earth, there have been five mass extinctions. Now, a sixth one is underway. This one is entirely caused by man, unlike the previous five. Species go extinct naturally at a very slow rate. Currently, species are disappearing at between a hundred and a thousand times the normal rate. If this is not catastrophic, one does not know what is. Why is this happening? All the credit for it goes to Homo sapiens. We kill flora and fauna through a variety of very effective ways. One is hunting. Once for food, now often for pleasure. Most of the big animals or megafauna of the world disappeared soon after man had migrated to their habitats. This was the beginning of the sixth extinction. Lions and tigers and whales may soon join the list. Habitat destruction is a key factor in today's mass extinction. As habitats are fragmented, they become too small to sustain a viable population of many fauna and flora. An enormous number of species compete and collaborate with each other in nature. A balance is struck. A rich and biodiverse world is a result. Ecosystems were once geographically isolated. The continents separated millennia ago and in all land masses, from small islands to continents, evolution and speciation proceeded gradually. Innumerable species competed and collaborated to ensure the survival of all. 
The introduction of alien species changed that. Invasive alien species introduced most often by European colonizers wreaked havoc globally. For example, a number of flightless birds around the world, particularly in islands, were wiped out when the Europeans introduced dogs and cats and rats. This accelerated the sixth extinction. Intensive industrialized agriculture kills biodiversity because it is accompanied by the widespread use of pesticides and chemical fertilizers. This has led to extensive degradation of soils and consequent biodiversity loss. Man's activities have also had a deadly impact on the oceans and all marine creatures from coral reefs to whales are fast joining the list of extinct or endangered species. Even a small increase in heat can wipe out species, particularly small ones. A great number of frogs have been wiped out in the last few decades because frogs are very sensitive to changes of temperature and other environmental conditions. What we do not notice is the devastating effect the changes described above have on small and microscopic creatures. The insect and microbial world are particularly vulnerable. Bees have declined dramatically. We depend on them for pollination. Nobody was hunting bees, but the widespread use of insecticides all over the world is responsible for only about 30% of their population now being alive. There is one overwhelming reason why both climate change and the sixth extinction are proceeding unimpeded. Human beings and their thirst for what is defined as development. The natural world is like a delicate and beautiful fabric woven out of a million fragile threads. As more and more strands of this fabric are destroyed, the fabric crumbles till it becomes unviable. Parts no longer support each other. Everything unravels. It is no longer a fabric, just pieces of rag. How are we coping with this global meltdown? Badly, one must say. Our actions, in spite of climate summits and legislations here and there, are too little and too late. Why is this? At an intellectual level, many of us are aware of the problems, but we simply refuse to change our behavior. We are addicted to consumption and comfort and pleasure and mindlessly continue with our dangerous and unsustainable behavior. Kerala lucky to have an abundance of greenery and other biological wealth, has not been immune to this tendency. Consider this. Nearly a quarter of the flora mentioned in Hortus malabaricus is extinct or critically endangered. Many others are vulnerable or endangered. There is an elephant in this room. That is a giant issue no one will talk about. That is our growing population. I have mentioned it, but I will not talk about it either. What should we be doing to avert the disaster that is the sixth extinction? First, understand the problem. We need good research that will document our biological wealth and identify the species that require attention. Luckily, we have good biologists and scientists in our midst. They need support. When they make recommendations, we should study them and then act on them, not pass them, that is the recommendations, on to termites. There needs to be a campaign to educate the public about the sixth extinction. Extinction is not an abstract problem that exists in an imaginary realm, but a real world problem that has to be addressed urgently by governments and by corporate giants and by the general public. But let us not put this on every syllabus. Then we will turn them into bullet points and forget them the minute the exams are over. Let us instead adopt a two-pronged strategy. One, let us try to recover all those species that are on the verge of extinction. One way of doing this would be to ensure that in a good number of places, Attempts are made to plant and nurture endangered trees and plants and bring back the fauna that might have been dependent on them. The second would be to preserve what little is left of the unmolested natural world 
so more species do not slide towards extinction. This does not mean fencing off large areas of forests or other ecosystems, but of managing them with intelligence and compassion, with knowledge and concern. We have the knowledge, what we lack is the will. Remember the Vechur cow? This native species had dwindled to a few dozen before concerted efforts brought it back from the brink. They are still endangered, but steps are being taken to preserve them. Kerala has a huge number of plants and trees and insects and fish and animals which are in a similar situation. With a collective effort, we might be able to save all or most of them. But only if our development model is changed. Kerala is biologically rich but ecologically fragile. Let us recognize this in our actions and shift to a sustainable way of ensuring prosperity for everyone. We may pave all of Kerala with marble and gold, but if we fritter away our biological wealth, Kerala will not just be a poorer place, it will not be Kerala. To sum up, the sixth extinction and the consequent loss of biodiversity is an existential problem facing those of us in Kerala and all of mankind. It is caused by global warming, hunting, fragmentation of ecosystems, industrialized agriculture, deforestation, pollution, the introduction of invasive and alien species, overpopulation and other factors. If we do not halt climate change and the sixth extinction, our future is in doubt. The earth will go on with us or without us, probably without us, unless we act now. In the English program, you were listening to a talk on the sixth extinction and why we should be concerned about it by P. Vijay Kumar, retired professor, Government College for Women, Thiruvananthapuram. This broadcast came to you from the Thiruvananthapuram station of All India Radio.